Rishi Sunak has very few chances uh, at redeeming himself, let alone uh, saving the general election for the Conservatives. I, I think that I, I think he has to recognise that the idea of winning the next general election is out of the question. So the next question is, how does he hold his head up high? And I think he has two choices, only two. Um, I mean, he can play the re rhetoric game of distraction and magic tricks. Um, he can do some... He, he, he can try the foreign um, venture, going off to uh, meet Zelensky, pulling rabbits out of hats and so on, and looking grand on the world stage, but it won't... It won't wash. And more than that, he's not very good at that sort of thing. He's not really a a people person. He's not very effective meeting all these other people. He doesn't have the charisma of Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson could do it. And in fact, if you remember, at the end of Boris Johnson's tenure, that's exactly what he tried to do. So I don't think that's really playing to Sunak's strengths. He can play the blame game... If he dares to start blaming Liz Truss or wagging the finger at Kwasi Kwarteng, he might actually get somewhere. He could wag the finger at uh, Kemi Badenoch or Suella Braverman. He might get somewhere. But I don't know whether Rishi Sunak is ready for some fingering. But uh, the alternative... The alternative is that he can plough on and claim that um, claim, he's got two choices. He can, uh, this is what I said at the beginning, because I don't think the fingering and I don't think the uh, distraction is actually going to work. So he's got two choices. He can either go good, in which case he's going to build a campaign of hope uh, and optimism and we will get it right in the end. That's the that, that's actually what Mr. Hunt is setting out in his uh, ranging around the television studios today. That is basically what Hunt is doing. The alternative is a fear campaign, which is what Sunak began the other day. The fear campaign, because he's got no more cards left to play, the fear campaign would probably mean that the uh, election date quite firmly announced by George Osborne uh, on his vlog with um, Balls was um, would would be uh, would not be November the 16th I think he was very specific um, on the basis that people uh, in uh, Whitehall had got that date ringed as no further business or you've got to save this date this date is is sacrosanct uh, so I think I, I think Rishi Sunak could bring all that forward to May. If he goes for a fear campaign, it's a fear campaign which he's already started. He has pressed that button. And I think what he's probably doing is saying, I'm going to do the fear campaign if your hope campaign doesn't work. Um, my, my first thought last week when we were talking about uh, recessions, or about two weeks ago now, when we were talking about recessions and uh, you know, the, fact that we, the fact that we'd plunged into recession. A recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. The moment we plunge into, concession, into a recession, I thought that um, Rishi Sunak was, was going to was going to go through some rhetorical gobbledygook and uh, and, and and try to uh, try to try to ease us out, uh, chugging along with austerity policies, um, which are of course damaging and ineffective, um, but confusing the electorate so they forget the failures of the successive conservative governments that led to a lower living standard. Uh, for everyone except, of course, for the senior conservatives and their acolytes. Um, lower, lower living standard. How do we know? Because we've got the graphs, we've got the evidence which is now being reported to prove it. Goods trade, 15% below G7 since Brexit. Average weekly earnings, well below 
the average weekly earnings in 2008. Um, net migration increased by fourfold since Brexit. Three times higher NHS waiting lists since 2010. The highest level of debt as a percentage of GDP since the 1960s. None of that is remotely positive. Not remotely positive. And I think George Galloway uh, championing Palestine. Um, that, I, I think that is the button of fear. That is the button of fear. And, and, and possibly the right wing. And I think to capitalise on that, we might well see the um, Kemi Badenoch and Liz Truss and Suella Bravman losing the whip because what else has Rishi Sunak um, got to demonstrate except that these people have gone over to the far right? I'm not sure they all have, actually, but, um, you know, if he wants to define Tufton Street as the far right, then he has to distance himself from the whole um, facade of Tufton Street. I wish he would. I wish he'd done it long ago. I, I think he's going to do it too late. But that will be the that will be the um, campaign run on fear. And that is the default position if Hunt's campaign of hope fails. And Hunt, I suspect, has been given a very short lease of life. Uh, look at Hunt on TV today. And this is with the background of the OBR, the chair of the OBR, um, saying in the Commons uh, that the financial predictions of the government until March 2025 are, quote, a work of fiction. Departmental spending, a work of fiction. He was speaking in a Commons committee. The, the rats are leaving the ship and they're not taking prisoners. Too many mixed metaphors there, isn't it? But Hunt on TV today, the BBC, he also did LBC. He did, he did other programmes. I mean, he must be exhausted, poor dear. Um, but, um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it was just verbiage. Verbiage. Words. Nothing more than that. He couldn't say that the Conservative Party is the party of cutting taxes. He could only say we hope it's the party of cutting taxes. Because we're now paying the highest taxes since World War II. He could talk about more North Sea oil revenue. He can talk about the extra money that we're going to claw back from not building the extra link to HS2. We shouldn't have built HS2 at all. It's a vanity project. It should have gone in 2019. Um, he's going to talk, uh, he talks about um, running public services more efficiently. I, I would say the same thing, but I think that's a code for cutting civil servants across Whitehall. And, um, and, and that would be one of, his, um, one of his clues, a firm clue that civil servants are going to be slashed. Uh, he, he, he boasts about inflation having come down since he took office. It was 11% then. It's now 4%. He took office. Um, you know, it, it's Liz Truss. Liz Truss is responsible for that peak in, of inflation. It's not, it's not something he inherited from the Labour Party. He can't blame the Labour Party. It's the Conservatives that drove up inflation. The Conservatives might have pulled it down. But what's the point of that? He's going to say um, that in order to keep inflation down and to get inflation further down, uh, public services will need to be run more efficiently and taxes uh, need, to, need to be brought down in the future when we can. He will talk about responsibility because that's all he can talk about. I don't think when the budget is delivered on Wednesday, he will actually be able to deliver anything of substance. 
Now, against that, the Labour Party is planning the non-DOM abolition. That will claw in a little bit of money. They're going to pursue the dodgy COVID um, contract people. Uh, Baroness, whatever her name was. And, and, and all that rubbish overseen by Matt Hancock from the stationary cupboard. You will get the stationary cupboard moving. Well, it's going to move to hell in a, bu in a hand cart, isn't it? Um, and a windfall tax on oil and gas, as well as removing VAT from private education. And, uh, and charitable status, I suppose. I think... Uh, that's not going to produce enough money to run the country. And it's not going to produce enough money to get dentistry back up on its feet or to get the NHS running efficiently. The, but I made, a, I made a video last night. I said it doesn't matter what Labour offers. It doesn't matter. All it has to point to is the Conservative record of failure. And that Conservative record of failure is so absolute... I don't see how it is remotely possible, whether, whether one goes along with Rishi Sunak's fear campaign or one goes along with Hunt's optimism, both of them are toxic. Toxic Sunak, toxic Hunt. Now I say that very carefully.